man looks for in a compact car depends on whether he's a family man or a bachelor. There's one thing most men have in common, though, and that's a built-in appreciation of the facts which make one car more valuable to them than another. So let's talk about these three leading compacts, Valiant, Corvair, and Chevy 2, and what they offer to a family man and to a bachelor. Sports Car Dash, says Corvair Advertising. This has a general appeal to the bachelor in each of us, naturally. But a quick inspection of any Corvair by a family man shows that it just doesn't have enough room. That's why Chevrolet brought out the Chevy 2 as a sensible car to win back some of those family car sales that Corvair's been losing to roomier compacts. Here are the two sportiest models, Valiant Signet, a hardtop, and Corvair Monza Club Coupe, a two-door sedan. Signet recently won the Society of Illustrators Award for its beauty of design. Inside, both have bucket seats in front, but Signets are the real McCoy, and look, they're the same design and construction as those on the Chrysler 300, a car that costs over a thousand dollars more. And here's the story on performance with standard engines, horsepower, and its relation to car weight. Valiant's 101 horsepower moves about 25 pounds per horsepower. Corvair's 80 horsepower is saddled with more than 30 pounds per horse. And this ratio of car weight to horsepower is important. The less weight per horse, the more agile the car. In optional engines, Valiant's 145 horsepower pulls only about 17 pounds per horsepower. Corvair's 102 horsepower pushes 24 pounds per horse, about the same as the Valiant standard engine. As a matter of fact, Valiant standard engine has about 15% more torque or turning power than Corvair's extra cost performance option. In automatic transmissions, Valiant's three-speed push-button torque flight has a breakaway ratio, or power multiplication at the start, of 5.39 to 1. Corvair's two-speed power glide has a 4.73 ratio. The Corvair buyer can compensate somewhat for his lack of power by getting a four-speed manual transmission for about $64 extra. That's about $17 more than Valiant's 145 horsepower engine. Speaking of dollars and cents, Valiant base prices are lower than Corvair's by from $24 to $62, series for series and model for model. Now, to satisfy our family man buyer, we'll check out the Valiant V200 with the Chevy 2 300, both four-door sedans. Valiant's grille has more automotive character to it. It's also a bit lower, so the driver can more easily spot any small fry that wander in front of him as he pulls out of his driveway. And Valiant's double headlights provide safer nighttime visibility. Here are some typical differences. Valiant's hood latch is chrome-plated. Chevy 2's is painted black. Valiant has bright door moldings. Chevy 2, none. Valiant has full wraparound bumpers, front and rear. Chevy 2 does not. And when our family man looks inside the two cars, he remembers that he and his tribe will be doing a heap of traveling in it in the next few years. What does he find? Extra touches of luxury on Valiant, like these door panels, upholstered all the way up to the window. Chevy 2 has cold metal there. A Valiant instrument panel that's as crisp and smart as anything on the road. Chevy 2's painfully plain, wouldn't you say? Valiant has convenient push buttons for automatic transmission and heater. Chevy 2 push-pull levers and knobs. No question as to which is more sensible and attractive. You can get into the rear compartment of a Valiant easily. On Chevy 2, the slanted rear pillar can dish out a nasty bang on the head. And when the rear seat passenger sits down, Valiant's third side window lets him see easily. Chevy 2's rear canopy hides the scenery. Typically, Valiant's middle pillars are thinner and, and smarter than Chevy 2's, and give a little more visibility. Inside, the dimensions are about the same. Valiant has a slight edge in legroom, Chevy 2 has a bit more shoulder room. 
The roof in the Valiant is padded with blanket insulation that reduces noise and temperature extremes. When you hit it, the sound is muffled. Chevy 2's goes bong like a drum. It just has a thin layer of felt cemented to the roof. Both trunks have about the same cubic capacity, but Valiant stores the spare tire neatly out of the way, and Valiant's trunk is longer and higher. Behind the wheel out on the road is probably the most important checkpoint of all for the family man. Here's where he finds out how Valiant and Chevy 2 go, stop, handle, and ride. So he looks under the hood of each car. And he finds that in standard engines, Valiant 6 has 101 horsepower and pulls 25 pounds per horsepower. Chevy 2's standard is a 4 with only 90 horsepower and pulls 27 pounds per horse. Now, as to optional engines, Valiant 6 has 145 horsepower and weighs only 17 pounds for each horsepower. Chevy 2's 6, with 120 horsepower, weighs 21 pounds per horse. As we saw with Corvair, Valiant has a sizable performance edge because each horsepower handles a lighter load. And when automatic transmissions are considered, Valiant has an additional edge with three speeds. Chevy 2 has two speeds. Valiant's intermediate speed gives smoother, more efficient acceleration and a wider kickdown range for safer passing. It's a lot easier to make those short turns, say, into a parking lot space in a Valiant. Its turning diameter is two feet shorter than Chevy 2's. Valiant stops better because it has about 6% more brake lining area than Chevy 2. In sedans, Valiant has bigger tires, too. They give more and safer contact with the road and a smoother ride. Of course, these Valiant tires are mounted on wheels that are a half inch wider than Chevy 2's. The Valiant safety rim has two ridges that help keep the tire on the rim in case of a blowout. And each Valiant wheel is anchored with five studs instead of the four used on Chevy 2. All these details add up to more peace of mind for the family man. Valiant's torsion bar front suspension gives him better ride and cornering control than the coil springs used in Chevy 2. And in the rear, Valiant uses the proven multiple leaf spring, while Chevy 2 is trying out a single leaf spring this year. It may work out fine. It's cheaper to make, but it has not been owner tested. Here are some durability factors. The bodies of both Valiant and Chevy 2 have unit construction. But a major part of Chevy 2's body is bolted on. It's not as solid as Valiant's because it's not all welded. And the Valiant body is more thoroughly rust-proofed. It goes through a seven dip and spray rust-proofing process. Chevy 2's rust-proofing is simply sprayed on. This can mean less maintenance and higher trade-in value for Valiant. Valiant's lubrication interval is about 36 months or 32,000 miles. Chevy 2 needs a lube job about every month. Now this is another way Valiant saves its owner time, trouble, and money. The Valiant alternator can cut out another problem, the battery life that ebbs away when you're in slow-moving traffic. The alternator can charge the battery even at idling speeds. Chevy 2's generator doesn't start charging till the car is running about 20 miles per hour. Believe it or not, there's no premium to pay for a money-saving Valiant. In comparable series and models, Valiant base prices range from $35 to $133 lower than Chevy 2's. Chevy 2 does include a heater as standard equipment. But even with the price of the better push-button heater added, Valiant's lowest price model is within $1.40 of Chevy 2's lowest price model. And for this $1.40, the Valiant owner gets a six-cylinder engine instead of a four, 101 horsepower instead of 90. To get the optional six on Chevy 2, a buyer would have to pay an extra $60. So whether you're a family man or a bachelor, you just can't go wrong by choosing Valiant over Chevy 2, Corvair, or any other compact. As we've seen, nobody beats Valiant for value. Thank <laughs> you.